Hey, what's up, guys? Sandeep here, and in this video, I'm gonna share my interview experience with EPAM Systems. So, I interviewed at EPAM Systems as a middle React.js developer, and they were recruiting for three to ten years or three to twelve years of experience. So, I'll be sharing all my interview and my questions that have been asked within these slides. Uh, so there were a total of three rounds. Uh, the first one, as usual, was technical round, which was of one hour on paper. The second was a directorial round or a managerial round, which is of 30 minutes. And the third one is an HR round, which depends. Again, it can be up to 10 or 15 minutes. For the technical round, the interviewer started with uh, discussing my previous role within the pre my previous company and uh, like what are the technical skill set I worked on there. And after that, he started asking me questions. And so these are the list of questions that he started asking me. So the first question he asked me, what is temporal dead zone? Can you explain? Explain how does browser understand JSX or JavaScript in general? Right. Then this was a coding question. This couple of he asked me a couple of coding questions. The first one was like write a logic to count the maximum number of repeating characters in a string. So within a string, uh, he told me to find the maximum count, the maximum number of repeating characters within that particular string. The fourth one was write a logic to move all zero to the end in an array. So he gave me an array with seven or six elements, uh, numbers with, as an element. And within that array, uh, he told me uh, to move all the zeros to the end of that array. The fifth one, like uh, he was like, can you explain me promises and can you write down a sample promise and show me how it works? Uh, sixth was like, what are PO functions? Can you explain? Uh, number seven was like, what are polyfills? So in web browser, we do have polyfill, which acts as a fallback of uh, different different sets of like, for example, we have polyfill. Uh, let's say your browser Chrome doesn't uh, like supports everything, but let's say for Internet Explorer, uh, some of the functionality uh, it's not supported at that time. But how will you make it adaptable for Internet uh, like web browser? Right. So in that time, we will basically need something called polyfill. For example, as if I, uh, as I know that dot includes method works completely fine on Chrome, but within Internet Explorer, previous version of Internet Explorer, it uh, it doesn't work actually. So you need to have a polyfill for that. So that is basically a polyfill. And he told me to write a polyfill for, for each method. So basically he told me for, for each, we have for each method in JavaScript. And he told me to explicitly write up my own for each method. So that is like uh, what you call as a polyfill number eight was like what do you mean by synchronous and asynchronous operation in javascript so uh the, for the ninth question that if you ask me what are the es6 and es7 functionality that i've been using in my projects so i told that i've been using es6 uh, pretty much so uh, he asked me to explain like to tell me basically what are the es6 features that i have used in my projects uh, the number 10 would be like uh, why we need arrow functions basically here you need to tell the difference between arrow functions and how is it helpful as compared to a normal function uh, like what does object dot freeze does what is event bubbling and how to prevent it what is semantic html name some html tags like html it will be named some html5 tags basically uh, so what is the difference between id and class in html tags uh, 15th would be like, what do you mean by CSS box model? Can you explain? 16th is like, explain CSS specificity. And uh, 17 was like, uh, explain different CSS position and elements that you have used and wh why is it needed? So like whatever you will say, position statics, fixed and every absolute relative. And so you asked me about why we need all this, like position absolute, when to use it, positions fixed, when to use it and all these things. So now this set of questions was like uh, mostly on React. So he told me to make a React in general component and where it will be uh, like, basically you can say it is at a counter. It will be automatically incrementing per second. So it, you can say, is a, uh, say it as a timer. So it will increment per one second. So I need to, I needed to make an yeah, like component for that. And number 19 was like, uh, explain different lifecycle methods, which are in general, you can say class components, all the lifecycle methods available. Difference between PO component and a normal component and when to use what. 
number 21th would be what is context api can you explain why do you need context api uh 22nd was like what are eight higher order components and give me a sample higher order components and write like he told me to write a sample higher order component and how would you fill your higher order component to different sets of components 23rd would be like control component and uncontrolled component give me an example uh 20 uh like fourth was like what do you mean by css box model uh so you uh, if you want you can like your yeah, css box model is something that i have already covered i think so yeah that is like so number 25th is like uh, how do you write a functional state set state and what is the use of it so these are all the questions so if you uh if, if you i think if you uh, like revise all the sets of questions and my other questions that I've shared in my all the other interviews I think pretty much these all in general uh, interviewer ask so yeah so if you are appearing for an interview I'd highly recommend you to revise all the sets of questions and I, I am pretty much sure that we'll get around 50 60 70 percent even uh, common within this so if you are uh, appearing for an interview do practice all these questions once before uh, appearing for the any particular interview it's not like epam systems you can revise it for any interview all these concepts are very critical and very useful actually so yeah that's it guys for this video i did have another managerial round which was 30 minutes so if you want that questions for managerial round there are few simple questions i can write down all the questions in the comment do comment below and i'll post it in the comments do like this video and i'll keep posting regular videos from now on i was little busy because i joined a new company so that's why uh, yeah so that is that hope you have a great day guys and thank you i'll see you in my next video